step into the captivating world of a beloved TV series from 1978. With its captivating drama and unforgettable characters, it's a show that keeps viewers hooked from start to finish. But did you know there are plenty of intriguing behind the scenes stories? Keep watching to uncover more. Who was your favorite classic Hollywood actor in this series? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And when did you first tune in to watch the drama unfold? As you reminisce about the twists and turns of this iconic show, we'd love to hear your most treasured memory or personal experience related to it. Share your stories and memories below. Your input adds a special touch to our community. So get ready for a journey through the ups and downs and don't forget to share your own tales. Stay tuned for more fascinating insights. In 1978, a groundbreaking TV series emerged that captivated audiences across the nation like never before. It wasn't just any show, it became a cultural phenomenon. Set in the oil-rich terrain of Texas, it drew viewers into its gripping plot lines and unforgettable characters. This show wasn't just about family drama, it delved into themes of power, wealth, and betrayal that resonated deeply with its audience. At its core, it reflected the excesses of the 1980s, showcasing opulent lifestyles and cutthroat business dealings. One character, portrayed by Larry Hagman, became an icon of the era. His ruthless ambition made him both feared and admired, with audiences eagerly anticipating his next move. But the show wasn't solely focused on him, it boasted an ensemble cast, each character bringing their own depth and complexity to the story. From the conniving to the noble, every character had their own struggles and moments to shine. In the end, this TV series left an enduring impact on television history, shaping a generation's understanding of power dynamics and ambition. Its influence continues to be felt today, transcending the boundaries of the small screen. In the 80s, there were big plans for a film based on a famous TV series, but unfortunately, it never happened. One of the original cast members, known for her role, received an Emmy in 1980, and even shared a Golden Globe with another actress in 1982. She secured wins at both award ceremonies multiple times. Another familiar face from the series also had notable roles in Dallas and I Dream of Jeannie becoming a well-known figure. The recognition came not just from the TV world, but from the public too. Despite talks of a feature film in 1983, it never came to fruition. The actress continued to receive nominations and wins, showcasing her talent and popularity the actor's notable roles in other series made him a household name. So, despite the excitement for a movie, things didn't pan out as expected for the beloved TV series and its stars. The actress's award wins and the actor's widespread recognition are testaments to their talent and impact on the small screen. During the summer before the third season, the pilot of an airplane once demanded to know who shot JR over the loudspeaker, threatening not to land the plane until she disclosed the answer. Alongside Larry Hagman, Patrick Duffy, Ted Shackelford, and Joan Van Ark, Charlene Tilton is one of only five actors to portray the same character, Lucy Ewing, in all three series within the franchise. Despite being nine years her junior in real life, Larry Hagman played Barbara Bell Getty's son on the show. In Germany, ARD declined to air seven episodes from the early seasons due to controversial content. Linda Gray faced termination during the eighth season after requesting to direct episodes. Her dismissal was averted when Larry Hagman threatened to quit in protest. Throughout the series, Miss Ellie was married to two powerful men. Her first husband, Jock Ewing, was an oil tycoon with a manipulative nature, while her second husband, Clayton Farlow, was wealthy but occasionally hot-tempered. In April 1981, the writers of the show decided not to write Jim Davis' death into the storyline right away. They considered replacing him, but chose to keep Jock Ewing alive on the show until early 1982 when it was revealed he died in a plane crash while drilling for oil in South America. The series launched the acting careers of several individuals, including Patrick Duffy, Victoria Principal, Linda Gray, Steve Connolly, Charlene Tilton, Sherry J. Wilson, Sasha Mitchell, and Kathy Podwell. Larry Hagman, who idolized Jim Davis from a young age, portrayed his television father until Davis' death. Hagman kept a portrait of his idol in his house until his own passing. Unfortunately, Hagman couldn't attend Davis' funeral due to a London airport strike delaying his plane. In the world of television, some characters become unforgettable. One such character, played by Larry Hagman, left a strong impression on viewers. Alongside his co-stars Patrick Duffy and Sasha Mitchell, Hagman brought this character to life in a popular show. Later, they all reunited for another series called Step by Step. In the first episode of this new show, one of the characters drove a flashy red car and wore a cool leather jacket, reminiscent of their previous role. 
Surprisingly, in the final episode of Step by Step, that same character still had the same car and jacket, keeping the memory alive for fans. This consistency not only made fans happy, but also showed how far the characters had come since the beginning. The image of this character in their signature car and jacket symbolizes the lasting impression they made on viewers. Sherry J. Wilson gained recognition for her roles as April Stevens Ewing in the series and as Alex Cahill Walker in another show. Barbara Bell Geddes, known as Mama to co-stars Larry Hagman and Patrick Duffy, was a beloved figure on the set. Larry Hagman convinced Patrick Duffy to rejoin the cast for the show's 10th season. These interactions behind the scenes added depth to the series' dynamics. Larry Hagman, known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, worked alongside lifelong fans Victoria Principal, Charlene Tilton, and Kathy Podwell on the series. Barbara Bell Geddes commuted from her New York farmhouse to Los Angeles every weekend for 13 years during her time on the show. Victoria Principal, who used to live near Larry Hagman, was a close friend of his even before they starred together. In one season, Jim Davis filmed all his scenes despite undergoing chemotherapy until his health declined. The show's Hollywood interior, though larger than the actual Texan home, wasn't exaggerated. The Duncan Ranch mansion spanned 7,000 SQFT with five bedrooms and bathrooms. As Ewing family members rotated, the interior could change without altering the outside. The lot, priced at $25 million, spans 34 acres. Initially, the Ewing mansion was over 10,000 SQFT, but less appealing. When Patrick Duffy returned in 1986, his character's death was reconned as Pam's dream. James Brown, recognized for his role as Lieutenant Rip Masters in The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin, gained widespread acclaim for his later portrayal of J.R. Ewing's corrupt cop, Harry McSween, in the primetime series. After Jim Davis's death in 1981, the decision was made to write off his character, Jock Ewing, by having him disappear in the Amazon jungle and eventually declared legally dead. Initially slated for two brief cameos, Howard Keel's character, Clayton Farlow, became a regular due to his popularity with viewers. These twists and turns in character arcs added depth to the series and kept audiences engaged. It reflects the adaptability of the show's creators to respond to unforeseen circumstances and viewer preferences. Larry Hagman, alongside Patrick Duffy, Charlene Tilton, Ted Shackelford, and Joan Van Ark, portrayed J.R. Ewing in all three series of the franchise. Initially, Hagman shared a good rapport with Barbara Bell Geddes, but their relationship soured towards the end of the series. Bell Geddes accused him of betrayal and deception, leading to her departure from the show after the 13th season. Despite her passing in 2005, Hagman did not keep in touch with her. TNT and the producers approached Victoria Principal to reprise her role as Pam Barnes Ewing for the 2012 reboot. Principal declined, citing respect for the tragic love story of Bobby and Pam. She felt her character's storyline had reached its conclusion with her character's fatal car accident and did not wish to risk tarnishing it. She issued a statement emphasizing her decision's loving and respectful nature towards the show, the characters, and the fans. Throughout its run, three different actresses portrayed the character Jenna Wade, Morgan Fairchild, Francine Tacker, and Priscilla Presley. The filming of the show took place at South Fork Ranch, a famous location that added to the drama and excitement of the series. A group of 15 dedicated actors brought the characters to life over the decades, from the 1970s to the 1990s. These actors included Larry Hagman, Patrick Duffy, Ken Kershaw, Linda Gray, Barbara Bell Geddes, Steve Connolly, Charlene Tilton, Mary Crosby, Ted Shackelford, Joan Van Ark, Don Starr, Cheryl Lynn Rotino, Tom Fuxello, Jared Martin, and George Petrie. Their performances kept audiences engaged and left a lasting impression worldwide. Patrick Duffy's wife suggested the dream season to explain Bobby Ewing's return from the dead, adding an unusual twist to the story that kept viewers hooked. Barbara Bell Geddes, who was a constant presence in almost every episode, sometimes missed shows because of heart surgery, highlighting the challenges faced by the cast. During her brief absence, Donna Reed filled in for her until Bell Geddes returned, using her influence to secure a well-deserved pay raise. After Bell Geddes left, there were more changes in the cast when Morgan Fairchild, known for playing Jenna Wade, decided not to come back for later seasons, surprising many. Priscilla Presley then took on the role, bringing her own unique style to the beloved character. Interestingly, Fairchild's mother was disappointed with her daughter's decision not to continue, showing the complexities in the entertainment industry. All these cast changes and negotiations behind the scenes added layers of interest to the show's history, showing how dynamic making TV can be. 
the drama behind the scenes sometimes seemed as gripping as the story on screen, keeping audiences fascinated and securing the show's place in TV history. In the world of entertainment, unexpected connections often shape the paths of actors' careers. Take, for example, Patrick Duffy, known for his roles in popular TV shows. He once found himself working alongside Sasha Mitchell, who played his uncle in a series. What's intriguing is that Larry Hagman, another co-star from a different show, suggested Duffy for this role. Initially, Duffy didn't even recognize Hagman, showing how people's careers can intertwine in surprising ways. Sadly, when Jim Davis passed away, it brought the cast of a well-known series together. Except for Hagman and Duffy, everyone gathered to honor Davis at his funeral. This moment not only showed how close the cast was, but also how their time together on the show had forged strong bonds. These stories highlight the importance of relationships in Hollywood. Whether it's friendships or professional recommendations, these connections play a big part in actors' lives. Duffy's journey, from working with Hagman to the heartfelt tribute at Davis's funeral, shows just how much relationships matter in showbiz. Ultimately, these glimpses behind the scenes reveal the human side of Hollywood. The connections formed, and the memories made are just as crucial as the characters actors play on screen. This is the fascinating world of Hollywood, where stories are not just written on paper, but also through the connections between people. Larry Hagman, known for his role in the 1978 TV series, had a pre-Dallas connection with Charlene Tilton. Before they shared the screen, Tilton, as a young girl, frequented the set of Hogan's Heroes, where Hagman's close friend Richard Dawson worked. Off camera, Dawson treated Tilton to gum and candy, guiding her around the set while he rehearsed. Patrick Duffy, another key figure in Dallas, found solace in Barbara Bel Geddes, his on-screen mother, during a difficult time. After Duffy's real-life parents were tragically murdered in the 10th season, Bel Geddes became his surrogate mother, offering support both on and off the screen. In a curious twist, Bobby Ewing's grave in Pam's dream lists his birth year as 1949. Yet, within the series' reality, his birth date is firmly established as February 16, 1950. These personal connections and intriguing details behind the scenes added layers to the characters we watched unfold on screen, making the Dallas experience richer than what met the viewer's eye. Larry Hagman, known for his role as J.R. Ewing, made a guest appearance on the second episode of the spin-off Knots Landing. In the early episodes, Lucy and Ray were depicted as lovers until it was revealed that Ray was her uncle, Jock's illegitimate son. This storyline was later reconned. On November 21, 1980, a record-breaking 83 million people in the U.S. and over 300 million worldwide tuned in to watch Who Done It. It held the highest rating for a single episode until MASH's finale. In the world of television, some actors become unforgettable for their roles. For instance, Jim Davis is well-remembered for playing Jock Ewing on a popular TV show from the 1980s. Sherry J. Wilson, known for her parts in Dallas and Walker, Texas Ranger, saw both of her characters meet tragic ends from being shot. One of these characters, April Stevens Ewing, faced her demise during a mission to rescue hostages. Similarly, Alex Cahill Walker was shot while in a courthouse, leaving her fate uncertain at the end of a reunion movie. Larry Hagman, who had a hand in producing Dallas, once obtained a shotgun during his time in England. These instances highlight the dramatic twists that keep viewers hooked on their favorite shows. In her role on the TV series, Linda Gray missed her son's high school graduation due to her work commitments. However, she found solace in knowing that her dedication to her craft was paving the way for her son's future. Meanwhile, Larry Hagman, inspired by figures like Jack Benny and John Wayne, shared the screen with his idols Barbara Bel Geddes and Jim Davis. He reveled in the opportunity to work alongside such esteemed actors, realizing that every moment on set was a chance to learn and grow as an artist. Barbara Bel Geddes, who battled breast cancer in the early 70s, found her personal experience mirrored when her character underwent a mastectomy on the show. She brought a raw authenticity to her portrayal, drawing from her own journey to infuse the storyline with depth and emotion. Each member of the cast brought their own unique experiences and talents to the table, contributing to the show's undeniable success and lasting legacy. Amidst the second season of the series, one of the actors had to undergo chemotherapy because they weren't feeling well. The character they portrayed, Donna Culver Krebs, played a big part in how the show played out. When Jim Davis passed away in the early 80s, they, alongside the rest of the cast, attended his funeral. Alongside Barbara Bel Geddes and others, they played a huge role in making the series a hit. Their hard work and talent kept audiences glued to the screen, making the show really popular. 
Fans still hold on to the memories of their performances, even after all these years. Before the show began, Patrick Duffy was the only cast member not to watch I Dream of Jeannie, which featured Larry Hagman, despite being family friends with him. Barbara Bell Geddes left the series at the end of the seventh season due to health problems, but returned at the beginning of the ninth season, continuing until her retirement from acting in 1990. Joan Van Ark, who portrayed Valene Ewing, initially took the role as a one-shot episode, but ended up guest starring for a few more episodes, ultimately leading her to the spin-off Knott's Landing. During filming in hot weather, both she and Larry Hagman experienced real perspiration while shooting a motel scene, resulting in Van Ark losing 10 pounds after taping. In the history of television, there was a character that became really famous, played by an actor who wasn't the first choice for the role. Even though someone else was supposed to play it, this actor eventually got the part and made it their own. They became so good at it that people all over the world remember them for it. This actor was Larry Hagman, and the character he played was J.R. Ewing. During the time Larry Hagman was on the show, he didn't just act on screen. He also helped one of his co-stars, Charlene Tilton, a lot. She looked up to him like a father and learned many important things from him, both about acting and being professional. The song that played at the beginning of the show also became really famous. In fact, it was voted the best TV theme song ever in a poll done by Entertainment Weekly. This just shows how much people loved the music of the show. Even though some people weren't sure about Larry Hagman playing J.R. Ewing at first, he proved them all wrong. His performance became a big part of TV history, and his guidance and support for his co-stars were just as memorable. Isn't it fascinating how connections in the entertainment industry often go beyond what we see on screen? Take, for instance, a story that links actors in unexpected ways. Barbara Bell Geddes, for example, acted alongside the father of Patrick Duffy's wife in her first Broadway play. Later on, Patrick Duffy played Bell Geddes' son on TV. What's more, Duffy's wife's father happened to be Larry Hagman, further linking the two families. Even more interestingly, Duffy's own son, Padraig Duffy, joined the show as a character called Mark Harris. But the connections don't stop there. Larry Hagman, a significant presence on the show, remained close friends with Kathy Podwell until he passed away in 2012. As a sweet tradition, Hagman would send Podwell flowers every year on her birthday, showing their lasting friendship. These connections among the cast go beyond what we see on TV, adding depth to the Dallas family. The personal bonds off-screen helped enrich the on-screen relationships, making Dallas more than just a TV series. In the early seasons, the majority of the main characters on the show belonged to either the Barnes or Ewing families. Only three characters from the opening credits weren't part of these families by blood or marriage Carter McKay, Stephanie Rogers, and Liz Adams. Interestingly, Liz Adams was briefly engaged to Cliff Barnes in one of the later seasons. Larry Hagman, known for his role in I Dream of Jeannie, reunited with Barbara Eden, his co-star from the same series, during the final season of the show. Despite some producers' concerns about typecasting due to his previous role, Hagman successfully auditioned for the iconic role of J.R. Ewing in Dallas. David Jacobs, the show's creator, didn't see an issue with Hagman's soap opera debut. Larry Hagman's commitment to staying on the show stemmed from his wish to work with Barbara Bel Geddes, who played his on-screen mother. This collaboration resulted in J.R. becoming jockey and Sue Ellen transforming into Samantha in the Hungarian version. Hagman stands out as the only actor appearing in all 357 episodes, showcasing his dedication to the role and the importance of his partnership with Geddes. Throughout the series, Hagman's determination to be alongside Barbara Bel Geddes led to his consistent presence in every episode. JR's character, navigating the family dynamics of the Ewings, became a central figure in the unfolding drama. Larry Hagman, undeterred by the challenges of a lengthy TV series, remained the sole actor in all episodes. His commitment to the JR character and the chance to work with Barbara Bel Geddes significantly influenced the show's continuity. In the broader context of the series, Larry Hagman becomes the linchpin connecting various narrative threads. His desire to collaborate with Barbara Bel Geddes not only influenced his decision to stay on Dallas, but also played a crucial role in shaping the show's direction. Hagman's dedication, combined with the unique character dynamics introduced through the Hungarian translation, adds layers to the straightforward narrative. In its initial eight years, Dallas faced internal conflicts between executive producer Philip Kappas and key figures like Larry Hagman and writer Leonard Katzman. Katzman's departure at the end of season eight resulted in a new production team and an entirely fresh set of writers for season nine. 
The absence of Arthur Bernard Lewis and David Paulson further marked a significant shift for the series. Larry Hagman, a central figure on and off the screen, shared a compelling dynamic with Victoria Principal, despite their adversarial on-camera roles. Their chemistry, rooted in mutual respect, translated into a productive and enjoyable working relationship. Hagman, serving as a role model, guided Principal on set, fostering a positive atmosphere. In the realm of Dallas, Larry Hagman expressed a particular fondness for Deborah Renard, naming her as his favorite actress from the series, alongside Linda Gray. Their collaboration added depth to the show, showcasing Hagman's appreciation for the talents within the cast. The residents known as Duncan Acres served as the iconic South Fork Ranch in the show. It belonged to Joe R. Duncan. As Dallas gained fame, tourists flocked to the house, prompting its transformation into a museum dedicated to the series. Various actors, including Charlene Tilton and Jim Davis, filmed scenes firing the gun that shot JR before the shooter was revealed. This gun is now a display item at the real South Fork Ranch site. In its final season, due to dwindling ratings, only 10 actors retained regular cast status. Despite this, all 10 remained billed in the series' opening sequence, though half would depart before the finale. In the world of television, some figures truly leave their mark. One such figure was Larry Hagman, who played a significant role in a popular series from start to finish. He often spoke fondly of the show, calling it his favorite. Alongside him was Linda Gray, who played an important part, especially in a memorable storyline where she revealed the character's lieutenant. The show's success owes a lot to its talented cast, ensuring its place in TV history. Larry Hagman collaborated with Joan Van Ark in both Dallas and its spin-off Knott's Landing. In a touching gesture just before his passing, his co-star Linda Gray hosted his 81st birthday luncheon in Dallas, Texas. Jenny Harrison holds the unique distinction of being the only character to die twice. Her character, Jamie Ewing Barnes, met her demise in season 9's blast from the past when she was blown up in her brother's car. Her second death occurred off camera in season 10 while she was rock climbing in Mexico. Larry Hagman, known for his role in the series I Dream of Jeannie, didn't return for two reunion movies of the show because he was occupied with his commitment to the series he starred in, eventually becoming better known for a little show called Dallas. In fact, during a hiatus from the intense drama of oil-rich Texas, Hagman took a break to spend quality time with his family. The success of Dallas wasn't eternal, though. After 14 seasons, the series faced cancellation due to dwindling viewership. Larry Hagman's portrayal of the charismatic J.R. Ewing couldn't salvage the show from the inevitable fate dictated by its declining ratings. Barbara Belgetti's, a key cast member, was expected to return for the final season. However, negotiations fell short, and she was offered a deal for only four episodes. Barbara declined the limited offer, resulting in her departure at the close of the 13th season, leaving a notable absence in the concluding chapter of the show. The end of Dallas marked a significant chapter in television history as one of its iconic actors, Larry Hagman, juggled roles and faced the challenge of sustaining a series that ultimately succumbed to the harsh reality of television ratings. Barbara Belgetti's departure added another layer of complexity to the final season, leaving fans with a memorable but bittersweet conclusion. Barbara Belgetti's, residing in New York City when selected for the series, displayed dedication by shuttling between the city and the show's set every weekend and during breaks to spend time with her family. This commitment underscores her strong connection to her New York roots. Interestingly, the genesis of the series is intertwined with its spin-off, Knott's Landing. Originally conceived as a spin-off, Knott's Landing failed to secure approval. However, when the series found success, the producers revisited the Knott's Landing concept, and the network, impressed by the show's triumph, greenlit the spin-off. Before the series even took off, Barbara Belgetti's had forged a friendship with Patrick Duffy's family. Their connection dates back to the time when Patrick Duffy's future father-in-law met Belgetti's during her Broadway debut in The Moon is Blue. This personal connection adds a unique layer to the cast dynamics. In summary, the series casting involved a committed Barbara Belgetti's, the unexpected evolution of Knott's Landing, and a pre-existing bond between Belgetti's and Patrick Duffy's family that predates the show's inception. Throughout the series, the oil painting of Jock Ewing, portrayed by Jim Davis, remained a constant presence. Larry Hagman, who played a prominent role, retained the painting after the show concluded, eventually auctioning it in June 2011 for $39,680.
scholar Charlene Tilton, who befriended Hagman before high school, found a paternal figure in him during the production, given her circumstances. Mary Crosby gained significant recognition for her role as the character who shot J.R., making her memorable in the series. Mary Crosby made TV history by playing Kristen Shepard, Sue Ellen Ewing's scheming sister. In the 1980 cliffhanger, her character was a suspect in J.R.'s shooting. The mystery captivated audiences worldwide during the summer hiatus. In the classic episode Who Done It, aired on November 21, 1980, her character was revealed as the culprit. It became one of the highest rated TV episodes. Crosby's character later crossed over to Knott's Landing and returned to Dallas in 1981, meeting a tragic end in the South Fork Ranch swimming pool. Two sets were used for the ranch exterior, a real ranch and a studio set. Filming transitioned from the real ranch to the studio in each season's second half. Differences between the sets included lighting and the design of the swimming pool. Patrick Duffy initially pursued the lead role in Heart of the City, but returned to the show when Robert Desiderio was cast. Heart of the City lasted only 13 episodes, while Dallas continued for several more seasons. Desiderio later appeared in Knott's Landing, a Dallas spinoff. Throughout the series, friendships formed among the cast persisted beyond the screen. Howard Keel maintained strong bonds with Larry Hagman and Patrick Duffy during and after their time on the show. Mary Crosby, who portrayed Sue Ellen's sister Kristen, faced playful jests from friends after her character's infamous plot twist. John Beck's character on the show experienced a curious journey, surfacing in a dream sequence during the series' ninth season, only to fade into obscurity afterward. Despite these twists, the camaraderie among the cast endured, leaving a lasting impression on both viewers and those involved in the production. In the late 1970s, a chance encounter between two actors on the set of a film led to a significant collaboration in a popular television series that began airing in 1978. The elder brother was played by one actor, while the other portrayed his younger sibling. Around 1980, an actress faced a crucial decision regarding a role in a movie. Despite initial doubts from her agent about the character's significance, she insisted on taking the part. This bold move not only thrust her into the spotlight, but also caught the attention of producers of the aforementioned television series. It marked the start of her prominent role in the show. The television series concluded its impressive 14-season run in 1991, securing its place as one of the longest-running primetime series in American television history. Though its spin-off surpassed it in duration by a few months, the show retained its distinction by boasting more episodes. In securing Patrick Duffy for the role of Bobby Ewing, David Jacobs took a straightforward approach. Renting the office space where Man from Atlantis was filmed, he approached Duffy directly without agents or lawyers. A simple handshake sealed the deal, requiring Duffy only to accept the role. The aftermath of the dramatic dream season reveal in 1984 left the producers of another show irate. They were not consulted and, in response, chose not to honor the storyline. While the show reconned Bobby's death, the other show never addressed or mentioned his resurrection. No further crossover stories between the two shows were pursued. The actor's portrayal of the character mirrored his own struggles with alcohol. On screen, the character drank heavily, paralleling the actor's real-life struggles. In 1995, the actor underwent a liver transplant due to his drinking. Interestingly, on a special episode in 1996, the character ceased drinking, mirroring the actor's real-life decision after doctor's orders. In these instances, the off-screen realities seamlessly intertwined with the on-screen narratives, shaping the course of the show and its characters. In the initial four seasons, a character named Loella Lee Carraway served as a secretary at Ewing Oil. Interestingly, she was named after staff writer Loella Lee Carraway. Notably, Dallas found mentions in the lyrics of two songs The Day Before You Came by ABBA and TV Party by Black Flag. Until 2004, the first five episodes were recognized as the miniseries, while subsequent seasons were simply numbered from 1 to 13. However, when Warner Brothers released the first two seasons on DVD in 24, they renamed the miniseries as Season 1, causing a ripple effect. Consequently, what was originally Season 1 became Season 2, and so forth, culminating in the final 1991 season being labeled as Season 14. These quirks and naming conventions persisted across all official Dallas merchandise at the time. In the series, Linda Gray's daughter, Kaylee Sloan, made an appearance. The producers originally aimed to reintroduce the character Jock Ewing, but fans resisted any portrayal other than Jim Davis. Steve Forrest entered as Wes Parmalee, claiming to be Jock Ewing, but his true identity was later revealed. 
Throughout the show, Larry Hagman maintained a strong friendship with Patrick Duffy, extending beyond their time on Dallas. The camaraderie between them added a personal touch to the behind-the-scenes dynamics. These interwoven relationships between cast members, both on and off the screen, added depth to the overall Dallas experience. In one episode, a character played by Larry Hagman got a letter from his TV dad who had passed away. This mirrored a real-life loss he had before the show started. He chose to be in this famous series instead of a big part in another comedy show. This choice was a big deal for his career. Linda Gray and Mary Crosby played sisters on the show, but Gray is much older than Crosby. This age gap in the cast added depth to their relationships on screen. These behind-the-scenes details made the show even more interesting for viewers worldwide. Seeing how the actors interacted gave fans a peek into what went on behind the scenes. The letter in the show wasn't just a plot point. It also showed how deeply the actor was connected to his character's emotions. This connection between fiction and real life shows how much TV can mean to both the people making it and the people watching it. Initially conceived as a platform for Victoria Principal, who portrayed Pam, to mediate between the Ewings and the Barnaseys, the show pivoted its focus to Larry Hagman's portrayal of the cunning J.R. Ewing, elevating him to the central character. Despite this shift, Principal's character remained pivotal, creating a dynamic of angelic Pam versus devilish J.R. in 1984. When Barbara Bel Geddes departed, Larry Hagman proposed his real-life mother, Mary Martin, as a replacement for Miss Ellie. However, the producers ultimately went in a different direction. Originally slated to be killed off early in the series, Bobby Ewing, portrayed by Patrick Duffy, remained due to the chemistry between Hagman and Duffy, as well as the need to sustain storylines involving Principal's character. Duffy's tenure on the show was nearly uninterrupted, except for the ninth season, famously dubbed the Dream Season. The intricate dynamics between characters and the evolving narrative kept audiences engaged throughout the series' run. In the world of television, there was a duo whose bond went beyond the screen. He was known for his role in a popular show that debuted in the late 70s, while she was a talented dress designer from a bustling city. Their paths crossed, and from there, their journey together intertwined with the success of the program. The show they were part of emerged as a replacement for other beloved programs. Initially planned as a short series, it evolved dynamically, navigating different time slots until its end. The narrative mirrored the unpredictable nature of the Texan oil industry, drawing viewers with its dramatic storyline. Their on-screen chemistry extended off-screen too, as her creativity complemented his career. Their partnership became a symbol of the strong bonds formed amidst the glamour of the entertainment world. In his life, the show played a crucial role, shaping personal connections and leaving a mark on entertainment history. In The Graduate, a memorable scene features Dustin Hoffman gazing at a woman's leg as she puts on stockings. Rumor has it that the leg belonged to Linda Gray due to her well-built legs. Jim Davis, a co-star of Dallas, shared a special bond with Victoria Principal, who bore a striking resemblance to his late daughter. He carried Principal's picture alongside his daughter's in his pocket when he was laid to rest. After Patrick Duffy's real-life parents were tragically murdered, Barbara Bel Getty stepped in as a surrogate mother to him during the last of the five seasons upon his return. In the world of a famous TV series, unexpected twists often mirror the drama on screen. One actor's journey began with a suggestion from his wife, leading to a successful audition. His magnetic presence defined the essence of the show. However, the cast faced a poignant moment when the patriarch passed away. In tribute, his solemn portrait graced the walls, becoming a cherished memory. As the narrative evolved, changes occurred, much like the characters' complex relationships. When one actor considered leaving due to character concerns, another stepped in as a peacemaker. A clever twist revealed a character's hidden connection, adding depth to the storyline and retaining the actor in the cast. In this sprawling world, behind-the-scenes dynamics were equally crucial. Contributions from one actor showcased dedication to the success of the show. In the beginning stages of the series, Sue Ellen's character was a bit shallow. However, Linda Gray and Larry Hagman, who played important roles, added their own touches to scenes. The producers noticed their extra efforts, which led to Sue Ellen's character becoming more significant as the series progressed. Charlene Tilton, another cast member, showed her strong bond with her co-stars. She was the only one from the Dallas cast to attend Larry Hagman's 70th birthday party in 2001, showing that their connections went beyond just acting. As the show went on, Larry Hagman's role changed. Even though he was titled as an executive producer, it was more of an honorary role with a bigger paycheck. This meant he didn't have as much say in decisions as you might think. 
These backstage dynamics added depth to the show and influenced how characters developed over time. It's clear that the relationships among the actors and the production team played a big part in making Dallas memorable and impactful. In the world of television, there's a story that stands out for its impressive achievements and memorable characters. One actor in particular holds a record that's hard to beat, appearing in an astounding number of episodes in a row. This actor's dedication helped shape the show's success over the years. Beyond just one actor, the show had a rich cast of characters with interconnected family histories. These relationships added depth to the storyline and influenced the names of future generations within the series. One character, Clayton Farlow, had a surprising talent that added a unique dimension to his role. His singing ability, hinted at throughout the series, was a pleasant surprise for viewers and showcased the actor's diverse skills. As the show progressed, Clayton's musical background became a recurring theme, adding to the overall enjoyment of the series. This attention to detail and character development contributed to the show's popularity and kept audiences hooked for years. Looking back, it's clear that the show's success was the result of many factors coming together from the actors' dedication to their roles to the intricate family histories woven throughout the storyline. It's a testament to the creativity and talent behind the scenes, leaving a lasting impact on television history. Larry Hagman, a key figure in the 1978 TV series Dallas, shared a poignant connection with the show. Co-star Linda Gray revealed in an interview that Hagman found solace in reconciling with his mother following the loss of his stepfather. Another prominent actor, Patrick Duffy, commanded attention not only for his role, but also for his earnings. Duffy pocketed a substantial $75,000 per episode during the run of Dallas, complemented by a hefty $1 million signing bonus spanning from 1986 to 1991. The intricacies of Larry Hagman's personal life found a unique expression in the series. Before Dallas unfolded its narrative, Hagman had already faced the loss of his real-life father. In a poignant scene where J.R. Ewing reads a letter from his late father, Jock Ewing, the character serving in World War II, it was Hagman himself who narrated the heartfelt words his father had penned before his passing. These personal connections added a layer of authenticity to the characters, resonating with the audience on a deeper level. In the world of TV, there's often more to the story than what we see on screen. For instance, in a popular series, a group of actors had a special connection. They were the only ones to appear in both the first and last episodes. One of the main actors, Larry Hagman, had an interesting link with his co-star, Charlene Tilton. Tilton used to be Hagman's favorite TV star when he was young. Some characters' names in the show had a connection to the production team. Clayton Farlow and his son, Dusty, shared names with someone from behind the scenes. It's like a little nod to the people who worked on the show. All these details make the characters richer and more connected. It shows how everyone involved in making the show, both in front of and behind the camera, played a part in its story. In the realm of television drama, certain actors and actresses shine brightly, leaving an indelible mark on the screen. One such individual, the recipient of a prestigious Emmy Award, displayed remarkable talent alongside their esteemed colleagues. Throughout their career, this individual encountered personal struggles, shedding light on the challenges faced behind the scenes. These insights into the cast dynamics and personal tribulations enrich our understanding of their contributions to the small screen. The TV series, known for its enduring theme music, underwent changes in arrangement and orchestrations with each season. Larry Hagman, a key figure in the show, resided in the same area as his ex-co-star, Steve Connolly. In the UK, the series gained immense popularity during its entire run on the BBC. However, contractual disputes arose with the international distributor, World Vision. In 1981, World Vision attempted to backtrack on an agreement with the BBC, raising the per-episode cost, anticipating ADV's interest. Legal battles ensued, and the series remained with the BBC. Yet, in 1985, Thames Television, a TV company, covertly signed a deal with World Vision, prompting another legal skirmish. BBC, strategically interrupting the current season's transmission, resumed screening in March 1986 after a prolonged dispute, maintaining its hold on the series. Eight actors, Larry Hagman, Patrick Duffy, Ken Kershaw, Linda Gray, Steve Connolly, Charlene Tilton, Ted Shackelford, and Joan Van Ark, portrayed the same characters across different decades in the TV series. Their consistent presence bridged the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, and 2010s. Larry Hagman, a standout in the series, shared a unique connection and rhythm with Barbara Eden. 
their collaboration on I Dream of Jeannie, and her guest role in Dallas showcased an effortless acting dynamic rarely experienced by Eden with any other actor. In 1984, Barbara Bel Geddes left the show due to a pay dispute. Donna Reed replaced her, but when Bel Geddes decided to return in 1985, Reed was dismissed. Reed, unfortunately, passed away from cancer in January 1986, shortly after leaving the show, preventing her from fulfilling her contract duration. These behind-the-scenes dynamics offer a glimpse into the intricate world of the series, where personal connections and contractual disputes shape the course of the show. In a 1991 interview with the Los Angeles Times, Linda Gray expressed fondness for the ninth season of the series. During this season, Gray played an alcoholic character, describing it as a fulfilling experience. She embraced the opportunity to delve into a challenging role, spending minimal time in makeup and hair. Gray's portrayal resonated with viewers who had faced similar struggles, receiving supportive letters from those who identified with her journey of hitting rock bottom before finding a way up. Howard Keel, another key figure in the series, took a unique approach during his initial meeting with the producers. Refusing a script reading, Keel bluntly stated he was a lousy reader, asserting that what they saw was what they got. This straightforward refusal reflected his no-nonsense attitude and set the tone for his involvement in the show. Victoria Principal, closely connected to actor Jim Davis, who portrayed her father-in-law, Jock Ewing, shared a poignant bond with him. Unaware until later, Principal discovered that Davis carried pictures of both her and his late child, Tara, in his wallet. Tara had tragically died in a car crash at the age of 17 in 1970. When Davis passed away in 1981, Principal read one of his eulogies, a touching tribute to their deep connection. These personal anecdotes provide a glimpse into the dynamics and challenges faced by the actors behind the characters, revealing the human side of the iconic series. Victoria Principal, a key figure in the famous TV series, chose to leave the show in 1987. She wasn't happy with where her character was going and wanted to explore new career opportunities. Some say money matters played a role, with rumors of her asking for more pay. However, when Patrick Duffy got a big raise, it became clear the show had budget constraints. Howard Keel then took on the role of Clayton Farlow, a character audiences really liked. Larry Hagman's strong presence remained constant, making a big impact on the show's legacy. These talented actors all influenced the series in their own ways, and fans around the world still celebrate their work. In May 1981, Delta Burke was set to play Catherine Wentworth, but had to decline due to contractual obligations to Filthy Rich, a parody of the series. Larry Hagman, Patrick Duffy, Ken Kershaw, and Linda Gray are the only actors to appear in 300 or more episodes, with Hagman appearing in all 357, Kershaw in 327, Duffy in 326, and Gray in 308. The series held the title of longest-running American primetime show after The Love Boat concluded on May 24, 1986, maintaining it until its final episode on May 3, 1991. During the fourth season of the series, all cast members returned except for Larry Hagman. His absence was due to contract negotiations, with Hagman holding out for a higher salary. Producers initially faced the decision of either meeting his demands or writing his character out of the show. As negotiations continued, scenes were filmed without Hagman. Eventually, network executives conceded, ensuring Hagman's return to the series. Morgan Brittany initially hesitated about joining the show due to considerations for feature films. However, she ultimately decided that a contract role on a top-rated TV show was better suited for her career. Victoria Principal is best remembered for her role as Pamela Barnes Ewing on the series. Jenilee Harrison portrayed the only character in Dallas to meet Demise twice. Initially, her character Jamie Ewing Barnes met her end in a car explosion during the dream season. Then, in the subsequent season, she was written off after supposedly perishing while rock climbing in Mexico. The latter incident was not shown on screen. Linda Gray is widely recognized for her role as Sue Ellen Shepard Ewing Lockwood in the 1980s soap opera. Interestingly, Larry Hagman wasn't the first choice for the role of J.R. Initially, Robert Foxworth was offered the part but declined, citing the need to soften the character. Ken Kershaw and Steve Connolly were slated for other roles initially. Barbara Bel Geddes, chosen by creator David Jacobs for the role of Miss Ellie, took on the job out of financial necessity after her husband's passing six years earlier. Larry Hagman, portraying J.R. Ewing, was meant to be younger, with a military background in the Vietnam War, despite Hagman being a Korean War veteran himself. Miss Ellie, Sue Ellen, and Donna Krebs were part of the Daughters of the Alamo, a ladies' organization. 
Miss Ellie's choice, driven by personal circumstances and the intentional age adjustment for J.R. Ewing added layers to the character dynamics. The involvement of the female leads in the Daughters of the Alamo added a unique dimension to the series. These behind-the-scenes details shed light on the character's development, revealing the pragmatic choices made during the casting and conceptualization phases.